hello, hello, and welcome to episode 14 of the Chocolate Bros. I'm Sam Riley, and I'm joined by Zach Burrell. Yes. Uh, and so we, I, I did skip the seven, uh, seven days and seven minutes this week. Um, not a lot was happening. There wasn't a lot of lists posted, and I was busy trying to grind out our local tournaments. We had a, um, yeah, yeah, we had a couple, I, couple bigger tournaments this week, actually. Two box tournament, right? Yeah. Yep, on um, Saturday and three box on Sunday. Yeah, so, uh, I'm trying to remember how I did in the two box tournament. I think. Uh, you won, right? Yeah, but uh, did I? I saw you won. <laughs> did, I, I, did I split the finals? I split the finals. Uh, yeah, I split. All right, all right, Alfred with right. Alfred. I split the finals yep. with Alfred, um, and then we played it out for the actual trophy. Um, they have like mm-hmm. a store, a little championship, like last trophy they give you. And then yeah, I was sad I couldn't play that day because I would have liked to at least you know compete for the trophy. But. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, well. Um, and then on the Sunday we had a three box tournament. Um, mm-hmm. that was super cool. Uh, we split the top four. Um, yes, there were four of us. Yep. Yeah, it was really awkward. We actually didn't know that we were going to do best of one for top eight. So I actually kept a sketchy hand. Um, and yeah. I was thinking, like, okay. Like, oh, I'll get him on the next one. <laughs> well, I was thinking, like, I'm more experienced. Um, I think this hand is playable, not great. I, I maybe should mulligan it, but you know what? Like, I'll keep it, see what his deck is about, and then adapt for game two and three, and I'll be fine. Um, yeah. And then, like, halfway through that game, I found out it was best of one because of time constraints. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we're going to we're gonna buckle down real quick here. Yeah, um, right. I saw so, bags. My opponent was a little in, inexperienced. Um, he he knew his deck decently. Like he knew like how to win. Obviously, he made top eight cut. Uh, but I, I definitely he didn't know how to combat the monster menace as yeah. well as other people might. So, right. Well, yeah. Interesting game for sure. Yeah. Some weird interactions happened. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's why we missed it. There there was not a lot going on on, on the national scene. We did have the ARG San Jose. Um, I think the lists were just posted like several minutes ago actually yeah but before this recording night yeah yeah so uh we'll, we'll go over those real quick um but we're just gonna go ahead uh also real quick vince uh Scanlon is doing the 15 uh deck challenge which is every I like this a lot yeah every combination of two uh two elements and uh so that's really interesting uh this week is water ice i have the list pulled up um from vince um I think Josh was just about to submit his. I know there's some crazy like <laughs> Leon Buckaboo strategy going on in there. Um, I don't <laughs> know if it's go. I don't know if it's published yet, but that's what we're talking about in the chat. And then my list is obviously if a soya list, um, most of what well, most of the water lists that we do for this challenge are probably have a soya um, for me at yeah. least, um, which is something else I think that we're going to talk about in this podcast uh, because I think both Zach and myself um, are huge fans of light. Uh, we like our for soyas. Um, it's hard to play dark because I can't play for yeah. I, just, I, <laughs> I, I I think that Terra, Light Terra, is a very very good card, um, and I think Light Zidane is an insane card. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the new the new menace uh, on the block is the dark package. So yes. do, do we want to start with that? Uh, <clears throat> do you want? Yeah, we can start on that if you want. It kind of leads into the uh, fails and successes of last week. So sure, yeah, yeah. We can do that. So, so basically, what we're talking about, when we're talking about the dark package right now is Cam. Um, yep. F- f- Cam is the five CP uh, nine thousand power four yep. is 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 big. Um, because you're getting a card, it's almost like a three CP. But because you're getting a dark card, I don't. Right. I don't right. We don't know where to classify. But it's usually chaos in the But it's early usually game chaos. Just play it. So. so it's not even that bad on turn one. <clears throat> yep. uh, it, it allows you to keep like the no backup hand, which I really mm-hmm. like. Also, on turn two is actually quite phenomenal because they have to remove it or immediately face like a Zodiac. Right. Which is really great. So anyway, the package with Cam is you either go get Chaos, you go get the Emperor, or you go yeah. get Zodiac. Um, mm-hmm. Not to say that those are the only cards you get. Certainly down the road, I think with other combinations of cards, we'll see people getting Zemus um, to make things unblockable mm-hmm. or even getting the five drop Emperor later on down the road where there's a deck where that, that is viable. Um, right. But the point is, is that th- this package right now is just so good. Um, it, by itself, Zodiac sounds like such a a card that just you know works against you. But my goodness, that card is insane. <laughs> right, and it's so like casting even just for two guys on turn like five or six can just completely swing the game because it's really hard to stop, hard to interact with. You cast it for four usually. Right. It's very very strong. Right, and so these packages are like particularly potent in the Earth decks because you have Star Civil. And yep. Star Civil allows you not only to search it, but the next turn just to play it um, in sort of a mm-hmm. devout style fashion. Um, yep. That being said, it's when you play Star Civil, you have the chance to go get this giant monster 
um, hypothetically speaking. Um, and you, you also right. have the chance to get a Shantoto. So you can that clear is always the, the decision. You can, you can clear the board, or you can put this giant forward on the board. Uh, and mm-hmm. uh, that, that, versata- that versatility is like insane, in my opinion. But further, in the Earth synergy, you have Gabarth to stop the damage from the Zodiac that you're going to get. Yep. So right now, I just feel like the Earth is actually just like pretty pushed. Um, mm-hmm. At we... least as a support color, or as a splash, just for even the dark uh, package, Shantoto, Star Sybil. I mean, yeah. it's like we in Opus 4, we were just shoving... Raban, Dataluma, Shantoto, and like one mask woman Mask every woman? deck we yeah. played. Like, it, you take a monocolor deck, slide those in, it's all of a sudden it felt better. You right. had the short order against like aggro matchups. It was great. Right. And, um, so that's kind of how this feels now. And now you don't even have to do that. Like, so then we were trying like some lightning earth, we were trying some wind earth, right? But Jamie actually just won his regionals um, over on the other side of the pond with mono earth, um, going as far as playing two camps. He had one Shantoto, two Star Civil, two Cams, Zodiac, and Chaos. He's playing Chaos in his Mono Earth deck because just being able to go get that backup is just right. so easy and so free. And, and it makes them scared you might have something else. So they might, oh, what's he got? It's going to come out from the other color splash. Like, oh, yeah. get up like a Leviathan out of nowhere or something weird like that or a Shiva. Like, get yeah. your blockers out of the way for an Earth deck. And my understanding uh, from, from listening to his interview, um, he did an interview with Lucas Watson uh, and with the Esperton. And from my understanding from after watching the interview is that it seemed like Jamie didn't struggle with his matches at all. Uh, part mm-hmm. of that is because Jamie is just very good. Obviously, he's one of the right. top players in the world. Was he playing like three Cockatrice, three Titan, that kind of thing? Uh, he was playing no Titan. He played Atmos okay. instead because uh, that was Toby's recommendation. But he was playing two Cockatrice, obviously the three Hecaton. Um, mm-hmm. He was only playing one Momody, which was the only card I think that I disliked the change of like I think Momody is like a two or a three of like that card is just very right. nuts. But I mean, obviously uh, it worked out great for him. He was playing Psycom Wardens, which is a card that I've been champion That's over awesome. here in Tampa a lot. Um, he's not playing Carbuncle because he's got Ingus and Inacross and all of his guys right. are giant already. Uh, but I, I particularly like Psycom Wardens um, with Carbuncles. They're they're like really sweet. But we're getting off the subject. The subject is is like his, the <laughs> highlight of his deck was Cam. Um, and more importantly, it sounds like the second cam, which I learned this past week, catches everybody by surprise. Nobody expected the second cam when I played him this week. Yeah, so I would I would play one. They'd either Shantoto him or whatever. Like I was against Model Lightning, and they just immediately blew their entire hand like Odin in because like I can't if that turns into lightning on your following turn, I have a really tough time dealing with it. So they were just blowing their whole hand. Then I had the second one in hand next turn, slammed it back down. I think their hands went right into their... Yeah. <laughs> or they have right to hands. They're like, oh, why do you have two? Like, Which is funny because... Pretty good, right? So when I, when I was playing some of the decks I've been playing with uh, with two cams, a lot of times I actually just mm-hmm. play the cam and then I go get the cam. Yeah, I, I did that one game too. Because <laughs> because like what happens is you end up just hard casting the cam. And then yep. the next time that they cam, they, or they kill the cam, you can just star symbol in the other one for free. Um, yep. It's actually just fantastic. Um, but... The point is, I, I think that like this has like pulled me away from Fasoya. I I want to say like when the fir- when the set first released a month ago, we talked about Fasoya decks, and mm-hmm. I told you, I'm sorry, dude. For the rest of the format, I'm gonna be on mono dark package, right? Yep. You said uh, every deck you play is gonna have it in it. I said every deck and I play is gonna. Power in a tournament with Fasoya. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be on that. Yeah. But yeah, hey, that that was fun though. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a blast. Yeah, but yeah, I just think that, but the, I also couldn't get the cam deck down, like like the mm-hmm. exact ratio, like how to play it. And I think Jamie with the, the the two cams is right on the money. Like I think that's where the deck wants to be two cams. I agree. I've been playing two cams my monsters deck. Um, I've been playing two cams along with two paradises and some of my other decks that I'm trying out. Um, I say eel, I the eel arch, but I just call it paradise because th- that is what the deck feels like. It feels like a paradise deck. Um, now, even, do you feel like cam? If he didn't search a dark card, no. If he searched a dark character, it wouldn't be, be playable. It would be playable. No, I'm, no, I'm saying, oh. I'm saying it, like no search at all. Like just had its element change, nine k out of five, uh, five drop body. Would that be playable? You think? Um, because there are five drop nine k's people just play, and they have somewhat lesser abilities. This one just defends itself rather than killing or so whatever Emperor, else. Emperor Emperor Zonday doesn't see a lot of plays, and it's in a worse element. Um, mm-hmm. Lena gets back a giant guy, a knight. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the five drops. Uh, you know, Gao gets back a monster. Sets, and never Sets dies. Her gets a gets a combo that's just nuts. 
Um, mm-hmm. Steiner. That way it dies as an effect. Yeah, Ste- Steiner's similar. I, I don't know is the honest answer. It would be playable. It would. It would. The fact that that's right, yeah. The fact that it's and dark would hurt it. Mid or would be right. Exactly. Yeah. If it could still color transform, uh, mm-hmm. probably. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that that being said, like I think the the card is. I I don't think it's overpowered. Right. I think Alua is maybe <laughs> yeah, yeah I know I'm crazy is maybe stronger <laughs> than Cam, but Cam goes into any deck. Right, yeah. that's kind of the piece, yeah. right? If like, if we if you I, stuck with Soya and everything, and then now yeah. you can stick Cam and whatever you want, and go fix your backup, whatever. Yeah, I would say that if 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 Red Mage wasn't a card, the Lightning decks would be playing Cam instead of Vaughn. That's that's what I think. Like okay, yeah, I think I think like the lightning decks being able to give Vaughn haste and just kill out of nowhere is mm-hmm. what pushes it in some of these lists. Um, in fact, right. I think it, it won a tournament. I have it up here. Uh, no, that's not that one. It, it won the um the Ohio Cup of Elements, the Fire Cup. Uh, Devin won that one. Um, mm-hmm. with Corey actually finishing second with Mono Water. Corey being the player who finished first with Mono Earth prior. Right. Did well, can't be upset, but he's got to be kicking himself for not playing Mono Earth because that is a very <laughs> favorable deck against the Lightning deck. Right. Um, the, well, maybe the, he wouldn't have gotten there, right? Like, that's always the conversation. Like, maybe he nah, wouldn't have gotten to even nah, that he, high. Without, nah, he would have done just fine, my friend. Like, so, <laughs> so, seventh place, Lightning Fire. Sixth place, Lightning Wind. Uh, fifth yeah. place, Ice Lightning. Fourth place, Mono Lightning. Third, pers- third place, Earth Lightning. First place, Mono Lightning. Yeah. Yeah, I think he would have been fine on the the, the cockatrice titan. Uh, Man, and mono earth just feels like old fashioned for anybody. Again, I know we make a lot of magic references, but uh, if anyone remembers the card siege rhino, yeah, where yeah, yeah. whenever you have one siege rhino, there's always a second siege rhino. It's just how it works. There's no yeah. reason to it, but it's always a, there's always a second cockatrice or a second titan. Yeah, like there's always the or, second effect or on Ravon. the very next turn or, or, or something or the that more stops it. recent. Jamie cases, there's always a second Psychon Warden or a second or a second Cam, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, right, actually, and you you remove it and then or you go to like you blow your hand like oh his his cock trees is down. No, he draws yeah. his card for turn pass and then you're like kill it again. You're like too bad, got another protection. Funny enough, this is what I was playing on playing on Monday. Um, so I actually have it sleeved up my uh, my nice little signed. You can't see because of the glare. Shantotos, <laughs> thanks Kelsey for that. But yeah, so I was playing on playing Modern Earth. On Monday, um, and I will probably play it tomorrow night. We have a competitive night over here in Tampa, um, mm-hmm. so I'll probably play Modern Earth tomorrow night. I think that it's just a really well positioned deck. Oh boy, uh, <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it just seems like a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So I, I, I like I said, I, I don't th- see myself getting off of this 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 cam package. Like if I open up this this uh, Twilight Tempo deck, it's Mono Lightning. Certainly, like it'll if it has Red Mage, it probably has Vaughn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we have Vaughn, um, and you have Red Mage to give it haste. I mean, so that's yep. just a thing. I feel like if I feel like eventually Lightning decks, even though they're aggressive with like a Lua, will be splashing for the Cam package. Being, so well, I mean, they're... my opponents in the rounds were. Actually, oh, were they? One of my Lightning opponents. Yeah, yeah. He had a, I believe he had a Cam and an Emperor or something. Yeah, I really like that because the, the Lightning decks are already liked having Emperor. Hmm. Um, uh, and. I, I, it just feels like to me that like the lightning decks are the decks that take the least amount of damage early. They have Al- they have Al- Cid, they have Odin, they have so much ex burst. They have ways to clog the board and then go go wide. Uh, it just seems to me that like Zodiac is best in that type of deck. Maybe maybe it'd be Earth Lightning, so you have Gabrith. I don't know. Um, but but again, it just it just seems like these decks are all going to move towards that. Uh, Which speaking of Earth Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mentioned before the podcast uh, to you where I was saying there's a dark Fusoya, right? Okay, yeah. So we we love playing Fusoya, not only because it removes things, but also the EX games you can play with either Ephemeral Summoner, putting things on top, or there were sometimes people were playing Lightning with Odin. There's ways to manipulate oh, yeah. the top card and have, make, have some cool plays. Well, obviously we miss that when we play dark, when we have Kalmanot, Chaos, and what we've been talking about this whole time. Yeah. But with Earth being so good and already naturally slotting with Dark so well, you can play the new Cecil. I had an opponent who I played against in, on a Sunday who had a really sweet deck. I think there's definitely some changes I would make, but he 
had this set up and I didn't have a target for him because I had a monster and no forward, so whatever it was awkward for him. But where he played uh, lightning to put Odin on top, and then he okay. played Cecil, and then he could use the Cecil special on command to just you know break Kill a guy, deal himself damage, and Odin. And then he still had the common op package of Star Symbol and all that kind of stuff mixed in too. So he had this like he had beefy forwards putting stuff on top, still getting that v- double value out of his EX burst triggers. Yeah. Still being able to manipulate it without playing water or so yeah, it was this, actually really kind of cool looking. This sounds like something you could actually just do with the Fasoy deck also. Oh, absolutely. It would yeah. obviously you know overlapping, but if you still want to play this powerful dark package we're talking about, you can yeah, do yeah. that while still having your EX game. And I mean, Cecil's just a good card anyway. That's fair. But being Although, able to couple that with like lightning and things like that, I, I think is kind of cool. I just feel bad though whenever I cast a Zodiac and I hit Cecil and Odin, like it's just. <laughs> I don't know. That would make me feel a little bad, but Just like, crack, crack. <laughs> I wish you could stop and be like, "Okay, this is only resolving part way. I'm gonna kill that guy with Odin and that guy with Cecil. I'm gonna take less damage." You know. Well, you can choose not to use the X, right? Like... Sure. Yeah, but that doesn't solve the problem. You're still taking <laughs> X damage, or X is their forwards. So, yeah. yeah, I actually have open from the uh, the the Ohio like Cup right. of Elements fire. Um, let's see what list, what place I got third place. Uh, Jordan actually played it. It has stack of good cards. Yeah, stack of cards. <laughs> it has the Odin. It has Cecil. It has the Agro Lightning from Opus Four, though. I wonder. Yep. I wonder if it would be something that he would consider in the future. Um, he also doesn't have the Dark Package. Right. Maybe, yeah. Right. I didn't notice. That, which is why. <laughs> which is why I opened it. Yeah, I noticed he has. He has like Shantoto, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't have Star Civil. I mean, he does, however, have Wall, which is. <laughs> Wall's not going down in price any, right? It's like still $1 trillion. Right, and very interesting in this list, actually. There are six Earth Forwards and two Earth Summons. Yeah. But half of the backup line, which is nine out of 17, are Earth Backups. Mm -hmm. But then he's only got three different types of Lightning Backups and the whole rest of the next Lightning. I find that very interesting. Yeah. I mean, you have Utility, you know, you got your Miner, you have your Momity, uh, you have Mog to go search for things. But that's still... That, that's interesting. I like that. Yeah, so it probably right. works just fine too, because you have the Lulu to make your guys bigger. So you have like the lightning buff, even though it's a lot of Earth backups. That's yeah. Sweet. So real quick, uh, going back, going back to Vince's deck challenge, I just want to highlight some of the, the decks real quick. Um, this will be my last Fasoya deck, uh, probably. Um, <laughs> but here, here's the thing: before before we moved on, uh, I really like Yul. And I want to play it with Fasoya so I can look at my top card. I feel like that's just like so strong. Um, so I made this like really cool uh, ice water deck um, that I am interested in trying out. It does have nine summons. It has a lot of ways to use the starter garnet. Um, it has your typical Genesis. It has, it has the, the geese shelk package. Um, it has mog six. It plays this, the Sarah combo. So you can untap all your, your mogs. Um, it does your moogles. It does seem like really fun. Um, what's what's the rules on the challenge in terms of like if they say water ice does it okay. have to be all water ice so with the, light or the, dark the rule or is, splash the rule is is that it has to be the two color elements so you can have dark and you can have light um okay but it's supposed to be competitive but that being said i want to say that josh's list this week uh again i haven't seen it we've only talked about it he said it's kind of just like a fun deck uh and i know that has like uh buckaboo and uh, Le- Leon, Leon in it, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I did think it's funny that that Vince had us choose ice water. This is you know several days ago, and then for this for Spain's regionals, ice water one. Right. Yeah, and it, it's a a monster deck with Goblin and Mira. Um, it has uh it, it has the monster packs like Realm. It's also playing Sh- Shelk Strago. Like Leon. Yeah. Yeah, it's playing three. Leo, Tonberry's, Buckaboo, and Goblin. So actually, no animation uh, monsters well, unless you are doing something with Ron. Correct, correct, exactly. Um, the only way to play Goblin being Gal or Sid Wolf, uh, mm-hmm. being really interesting. Uh, something I found interesting here is not no Fisher. Maybe it's because he doesn't have any three drops. Obviously, Fisher gets right. higher value from your three drops. Um, and he's already got Sid Wolf. Probably just didn't want to use more slots or something. No, yeah, that's true. I just didn't know like how good Astrologian is in this in this deck. Um, right. It does seem kind of aggressive. I do like Astrologian with Realm quite a bit. It allows some like, some really cute uh, attack steps where you can kill your opponent. I actually did that in the finals of the 
was gonna say was Kansas. Like, was it the was it game three too? Right, the finals. I, I mean, it was multiple times throughout the tournament. Oh, yeah, like I think you sure. and I both did it on camera at some point. Like, yeah. Was, so I do like ast- I do like Astralgen and Realm quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, so I just thought it was funny that this deck has uh, three Buckaboo, and then Josh's mm-hmm. deck also has Buckaboo in the funny yeah. strategies, uh, which is pretty cool. And then Vince's mm-hmm. deck um, is kind of a it just seemed more of a, a straightforward control deck, right? Um, which seems it, it did seem pretty cool. I like that he's going back to the Zidane. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the deck that uh, I uh, went undefeated with in the ARG. Um, Mm-hmm. The second Ifrit one, right? Was it second or third Ifrit? Uh, second, first one you played. That was the monster stack. Yeah, but I think it was the third Ifrit, though, right? <clears throat> oh, so I, I had one here, one in Vegas, and then another one in North Carolina. I think. Anyway, yeah, I played. I played a uh, ice water uh, six plus nine package, and that looks right. very much like. Uh, <laughs> this looks like an updated list to that. Yeah, this one has really some seven stuff in there too, though. It does. Yeah. What? What seven? Ooh, Renoa searches look? cloud of darkness. Ooh. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Um, well, what I was going to say while I was asking about the colors, going back to that real quick, is it would have been interesting to see uh, X copies of the new Phoenix in this water ice deck, because then you can do the whole Phoenix back Garnet to get Bismarck at instant speed from yeah. your deck. Yeah. Phoenix or to get a... Leviathan or anything like that. Yeah. Fe- fairy. Phoenix is another card fairy. that I just want to build around. The cards that I want to build around right now. Uh, number one is Cam. Like, it's just the strongest card. Um, mm-hmm. Number two is a tie between Wool, which I think is top three cards for sure, and Alua. Right, he's insane. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just picked the best cards in that, right? <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. You, you could very much play a deck with, with Cam, Alua, and Wool and slap together. Like, I think we did, right? <laughs> I, we did, yeah. You could, put, you could put another 41 cards in the deck, and it would be playable. Um, right. I just, as long as they're in colors, yeah. Probably. You could probably put 41 water cards in that just deck. Just one chaos, right? Because then you can cast yeah, all your you stuff. Can put, you, <laughs> can, you can put 40 water cards in a chaos and probably still win. In fact, <laughs> I will go on the record to say I would willing be willing to play that at any locals. 40 cards of any element, 3 cams, 1 chaos, 3 Alua, 3 wool. I, I'm fairly certain that is a winning... Uh, that I could take first place... <laughs> <laughs> undefeated with that deck list. Um, I guess. I guess. Ironically, so we're gonna take votes for what element uh, pairs oh, with those. Yeah, sure. Yeah, actually, I'm down for that. Um, man, that sounds like a stacked challenge, doesn't it? I'm gonna regret this when someone when the, when the votes come out to be fire. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, take forty fire. Take forty fire Yo, cards. Man, your deck's fire. <laughs> Hello and good luck for the puns, but not the wins. Yeah, yeah. Although to be fair. <laughs> A 40 fire card sounds pretty decent because I will be phoenixing in a Lua all night long. So oh, yeah. I'll be super excited about that. Yeah. Uh, so do we have anything else that we're supposed to cover? Is that it? Well, I, uh, I guess we kind of hit most of it. I was going to bring up more specifically uh, some of those deck lists we talked about last week, if we've tried them and if they've okay. kind of, you know, so what's... fallen out of favor or stayed in favor. Like I played the lightning fire list with the okay. phoenixes, Lua and all that. Deck was sweet. Very powerful, but I think it needs some tweaking. Uh, I think uh, maybe so, another copy of Uranger, uh, the Goblin package, that whole thing needs to bump up a little bit. So I don't, I don't know if you're paying attention uh, to Serena's matches at all. My wife, um, but my wife played that deck mm-hmm. at the three box mm-hmm. tournament, um, yeah. and she split uh, the top four with us. Yep. Um, but yeah, she she went uh, X and one in the in the Swiss. And then she beat her uh, quarterfinals opponent, and then we split top four. Playing the, the ice fire deck. Having Phoenix with Onion Knight is absurd. Like yes. these Earth decks with giant guys who just yep. think they're never going to die unless yeah. you like, she, break, she did. Them. She did play both Sweet. Phoenixes. She played the four drop and the seven drop. Yeah, I played that too when I played it. Yeah. And I want to say that, like, she played like three Goblin, three Air Angers. Um, I don't know. The deck, the, deck felt, oh, okay. the deck felt really strong from watching her play it. Um, mm-hmm. There were, there were times where the game seemed like a, a board stall, and then she would draw like an Alua, and I knew the game was immediately over. Or she, I'd watch her draw a Phoenix, and I just knew the game was over. Either Phoenix, yeah, I had a, the game. There was a yeah, there was a sweet play where my opponent had two Arcanists, the ice card that they name yeah, a yeah, number, yeah. and you can't attack. Well, well I had like two seems like overkill. Drops. Holy crap! Oh yeah, I had two on. He had three yeah. in the deck, but he pitched one earlier, okay. so he just had me locked up. I had four threes and a lightning, right? 
well, eventually I played Eel Narsh, got another cost out there, you know, six five three. Yeah. And he, I went to combat. He was at five, and he had two guys, one being Renoa. And I was like, how do I get out of this? Because we're both decking at this point. Yep. Ended up sweet play with Illua special, of course. Where Phoenixed on the Renoa to kill it, uh, scholared the Genesis with the three K. Yeah. Brought back Rigdia three K Illua special to activate everything after yeah, the Renoa, yeah. which also killed Genesis. And then I had a hasted Rigdia and an Eldnarch to swing for two for game. That, like, that deck has so many lines. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't playing the Eldnarch. She was playing a much more aggressive deck version of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I had the older. But yeah, so an updated an updated version of it, I can say, does do pretty well. It top four of the three-box tournament. Um, mm -hmm. it, it handled Swiss, I think, pretty easily. I think she only lost to a misplay um, in the Swiss. Uh, what other decks mm -hmm. were we do we highlight last week? So cover? Earth Wind, I was very high on. I still think it's sweet. Okay. Uh, are you willing to try that like tomorrow? Or are you just maybe not, not a different version. The okay. the deck just... felt it was such a light wind splash. Sometimes I just couldn't play my cards unless I found a cam early to go get the chaos or something. Okay. Are you uh, playing so three star symbols? Like uh. Yeah. If you play three star symbols and then the green right. backup, I feel like that's a pretty easy splash. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Oh, yeah, I had the three green back up, three Stola. I had three Diablos. It was that originalist you had sent me a couple weeks ago. Okay, you also have the. Was, do you also have the Earth backup then, right? That that searches for Stola. Or maybe uh, one copy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like. Yeah. But I, I felt like it was a little slow. Like the deck, I yeah. could get two guys out or three guys out oh, with it's the Warrior slow. of Lights. Yeah. Because it's Warrior of Light, Ingus, and Wall together. Yeah, yeah. Absurd. Yeah. But like, if they had any way to answer and like break that up, I felt very vulnerable. Even though my cards were all individually very strong. Right. And yeah. the deck together is very slow, strong. Sure, yeah. I just I ended up losing games to like my I'm teaching my girlfriend to play actually, and she whooped my butt on Lightning because she just dulled me through and I couldn't do anything about yeah. it. So the deck the deck does best when it's uh mid range deck fighting mid range deck because yep. it has a lot of That's synergy. Definitely how it feels. Yeah. Um, or if you draw Diablos, it's designed to beat like Diablos. the Ice Earth decks or the Mono Earth decks. Um, and yeah, mm -hmm. we definitely struggle against like the Alcid package and the Lightning. Right. Doling your guys. Yeah, I could definitely see that struggling. Yeah, I I, I do like both of those lists though. Um, oh no, they're fun. There's a lot of fun. That's yeah. the cool thing about this meta. I think. The way the cards interact now, it's very fun and yeah. very rewarding to have these crazy lines and plays and interactions and synergies. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, that, that does remind me, um, particularly when you talk about the meta, because I think in Tampa, our meta is a little different. Uh, mm -hmm. Next week, I do want to cover uh, a, a lot of, like, growing the game, because we've had some issues come up here in Tampa. Um, that I think we should just flush out next week and just talk about in, how, in ways that we're going to approach handling them. Um mm -hmm. That way we just Once see, we uh, actually approach handling them. <laughs> well, it's a work in progress. Yeah, right. Uh, so we're still trying to approach like how to... Because right now we have three nights. And so the community is starting to get a little split because, you know, you, you can't tell your wife or your husband that you're going to go play Final Fantasy five nights a week. You know, like... Right. Not realistic. Uh, when I was you, single. You yeah, I was four days a week. I'd yeah. drive 45 minutes every day. <laughs> right, right. And you're, exactly. That's you're traveling 45 more. minutes. So you're having to miss certain nights. Um you have to pick and choose, right? You can't you can't go to right. every night that the community comes up with. So we could find a new game store and host one every single night, but it doesn't mean that all the players can attend. Um, right. So we're going to handle... I think we're going to try and tackle that next week. That's on the agenda. Um, mm -hmm. And then hopefully next week we'll have a lot more regional lists because I know there's there's a bunch more UK regionals coming out. Um, mm -hmm. I'm super hoping that RB releases our locals soon. I would yep. love to know if I'm I can hoping, qualify. I'm hoping the two. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we get both. But we'll yeah. see. Here's the thing. I'm going to Kansas no matter what. And okay. I'm going to Indianapolis no matter what. Uh, I'm going to those yeah, things because they're fun. And I want to have fun and travel with the game. Um, right. I have a cheap place to stay in Kansas. And tickets were reasonable. Of course. So, you know, I've never I've never been to the uh, Indy. I've never been to Gen Con. Like, these, th I'm going to have fun. It would be ideal if I was qualified before I went to these. Um, right, so you didn't have to play in like the draft one, maybe, and you could just kind of play the constructed, see, try your luck, and then uh, I'll move probably on. I'll probably play both, but I would love right. to not have to like stress and like care, and like I put so much thought and energy into Boston, and then mm -hmm. it, it stressed me out so much that I ended up not playing any of the decks that I tested for it, which is right. so ironic and so bad. <laughs> Because you, you told me the day before too, you're like, I'm locked on this, I'm playing this, and then I asked you, you're like, Nah, I'm on this. <laughs> I think I think I did that several times. 
I think I told you. True. I think I think that didn't just happen once, but several times I told you I'm locked on this. I'm just blocking out the rest of it, man. Like, man. Yeah. So anyway, so I would, I would, oh, man. I'm hoping that in, the NA scene pushes for us to know what our our, our local qualifiers are. Um, having mm-hmm. at least two or three in Florida would be fantastic. We have enough players. I think we have, you know. Luckily, Max is already qualified. Maybe Max can block for us. Um, as a, you know, that's a term used in the old uh, PTQ circuit, where someone who's already qualified would basically like play to get to where you are, and then they would concede you into the, the finals or whatever, you know. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It, I I feel like I would much rather be qualified going into these events just so I can have a good time uh, and not stress. Right. I am an over warrior. I have too much anxiety going into these things. I would love just to relax and do this, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna have a good time either way. Incoming comments, but Sam, you win everything. Why are you stressed? <laughs> yeah, which is not true, obviously. Like, not true. Right. Like, right, I, exactly. I didn't win in Boston. Like, uh, and it wasn't close. I, I didn't, I didn't lose in Boston. I got destroyed. I got mm-hmm. at, like, yes, I made top sixteen, and then my top sixteen opponent uh, just elude me in on turn two. Basically, I was dead both games in a row. So, yeah. Hey, it is what it is. Um. Right. Anyway, so. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, well, I have one oh, wait, quick. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, we have, we have, we have Zach's thing. So here's my. It's not as philosophical this week. It's more of just kind of a. I, I saw a post about this, uh, this past week. This topic. Uh, would we be okay seeing a new card type, and do we want to see a new card type? Now in so the old about chapters like items? game. Yes. Uh, so okay. in chapters, there was another card type. A card type called items. Think of them like monsters, but they don't and weapons activate too, right, or no? necessarily. Yeah, weapons and items, I don't know that they were exclusive. I don't know if they're the same kind okay. of... I don't know if they're different. I, I, it might yeah. have been item subtype weapon. I don't know. Sure. But sure. basically, they come on the field, and then you can pay some kind of cost to like augment your forwards or yeah. your monsters. Uh, I don't know how permanently or whatever. Yeah. But it, it, equipment. It's like Imagine giving Titus a sword, and then okay. he does. he has higher power or whatever. Do we want to see that, or is it going to dilute decks too much? Because I was even nervous before monsters came out that it'd be too much, but then turned out, you know, decks kind of lean one way or the other, or fun, supplement right? with yeah. a couple, and they're fun. Yeah. But would items be a little too much? So can I, you're can I ask you're pulling you, to my directions. You played Magic for a long time, right? Yes. Were you around uh, when the first when the first weapons came out, the first equipment? You... Uh, I collected cards during that time, but I didn't know the actual rules of okay. Magic, and I didn't play properly. So, so no. I played. <laughs> I played a lot then. Um, yes, I would be. It would be great if, if they want to release items and weapons in Final mm-hmm. Fantasy TCG. Like, sure, go for it. Uh, my opinion on it is, please, please do your testing. Do not give us a Jitte and do not give us a Skull Clamp. <laughs> they, because I got my first Ooh. car accident. I got my first car accident because sta- I was too busy staring at a Jitte that I just opened. I'm not Seriously? exaggerating. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Dead serious. <laughs> it was a it was a, it was a fender bender. Um, yeah. But oh wow, wait, did you bend them or did they get you? Oh no, I I bumped the back of someone's bumper, like like tapped it, no oh, no damage. Okay. But they gotcha. but they panicked and hit the gas and like drove their car underneath the truck in front of them. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a true story. Anyway, Ow. so that's the power of Jitte right there. Please don't <laughs> please don't print that. You will cause yeah. car accidents. Can you imagine something to the effect of... Alright, so in Skull... Or in Magic, there's a card called Skull Clamp. It's a one-cost I already know where correct? you're going. Yes, please, no. And uh, no. You, 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 know, you equip it for like one or something. Once per and turn. Make it, it once plus, per turn, it, please. Plus, <laughs> plus one, minus one something. Imagine if they gave that in this game, right? You get minus one power for some kind of augmented effect. Like maybe you hit like a double strike kind of thing. Or like first strike or something. Imagine that with Vikings. No, no. You know, actually, you know what would be a cool, you know be a cool one? Man, we should just do a whole episode on made-up cards. Because a really cool one would be that during your turn, it has, like, plus... Or it has, like, minus 3,000 power, and during your opponent's mm-hmm. turn, it has plus 3,000 power. That so would it'd be, be like, sweet. The, do you play Hearthstone much recently? I don't, no. Anybody who plays Hearthstone has a card called Tar Creeper. Yeah. It's a 3-cost 1-4, but on your opponent's turn, it gets plus 3,000 power. Or plus 3,000, plus 3 power, or plus yeah. 2 power, or something like that. So it's just like crazy, and it has taunt, so you have to attack uh-huh. it. Oh, interesting. It's crazy anti-aggro card. That is interesting. That would taunt. be cool. Would that be a good mechanic for this No. Game? No? So you like have it. to... They already have I guess, it. It's I guess Cecil. S- right, Cecil. Cecil, right. Sink. 
true. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, Not as interesting as I thought. Forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Although, anyway, so you would be okay with it as long as it's okay tested it. well. Yeah, okay. as long as it's tested well. Um, I I I tend to think that people should that. Or not people, but um, the creators should err on the side of making a mechanic too weak at first, and then mm-hmm. later push it. Um, right. Like Magic Pot was pushing a little bit. Luckily, it turned out fine. Like Magic mm-hmm. Pot is not even playable. But to think of it, it was pretty scary, right? Like. Right. It was. And in fact, well, still, and in fact, it's still it's pretty scary. Playable. Yeah, it's still pretty scary, right? Like, like Magic Pot with the Opus Four Lightning Legend is pretty pretty yeah. uh, sweet or like let's just wait until someone drops their unit h from their water deck and we can go back to golvez oh man then magic pot right. gets real scary real quickly but, oh yeah but buckaboo is is you know there we go buckaboo is pushing it a little bit right like buckaboo is not as scary as people thought it was okay i could go find your post from a couple weeks before the set dropped where you put up a picture of buckaboo and said is the game okay or something yeah, yeah something yeah. to the effect of is the game broken or yeah. is this card like, yeah, gonna break the game. So I still think that the card is incredibly frustrating. I don't know how much Buckaboo you've played against. I've played against quite a bit. Um, uh, I got double Buckabooed when I was playing the Palimporum deck. It wasn't fun. Yeah, still won, but it wasn't fun. Yeah, the thing is that like, people are building their Buckaboo decks wrong, right? I say I mean, the yeah, the Ice player didn't have Duplark, so Fusoya just took the game over. Yeah, I, the, I just I think that people are building their Buckaboo decks wrong. Um, yeah, but anyway, that that long tangent aside. Right. I think it would be cool. Uh, we're interested to hear what you guys think. Uh, do we want items? Do we want weapons? Um, do we want? Or is there another card type? Is there something else you can imagine? Isn't there like legendary summons and stuff? I don't know. Like I think Sin, Sin was like a legendary summon or something like that. I don't know. There was like a about that. Bahamut. I don't. Know, we'll have to hey, listen. You I know, do have a topic to talk about real quick. I can go look it up. <laughs> no. Uh, what what we talk about next week? Next week, okay. I'd love to talk about growing the community. I have some good ideas for that. Um, we can okay. talk about made up cards because one of my ideas for growing the community has something to do with that. Uh, but I won't give any spoilers. We'll talk about it next week. Uh, but anyway, right. so we really appreciate you guys joining us. Um, I'm Thank Sam you. Riley. Jack Burrell. All right, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.